as, as you guys may know, um, uh, as the brother explained as well, I came to Islam in 2012. Uh, the matter which we're going to be talking about today is the matter of zina. Um, this matter is, is something that I'm really, really passionate about. And the reason why I'm so passionate about it is some, some of you guys might, might know and some of you guys might not know. Um, in Jahiliya, I've, I've, I've lost family members to zina. And I've had a cousin that committed suicide because of zina. I've had a, my cousin's friend who killed himself about three months later, hanged himself in a park because of zina. I had my neighbor who also killed himself because of zina. Unfortunately, the community that I come from is very lost. And wallahi, sometimes when I look at born Muslims, and I just feel like expressing myself how blessed they are to have Islam. Because when I look at the youth in my community, wallahi, by Allah, they're so lost. And obviously it's a passionate topic for me. I don't want to waste the time because we've got some really important questions that we want to talk about. Um, and wallahi, it's a great honor for me to be with, like, like right now, sitting right next to him is, I can't explain to you. May Allah bless brother Mufti Meng. Uh, I've learned manners, how to be humble, how to get rid of my arrogance uh, by watching these videos. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah. I'm not going to carry on any further because the topics are very important. And inshallah, we're going to get straight with it. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. To begin with, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man ihtada bi hudahu wa ba'd. It was such an honor to have met Brother Ali yesterday for the first time. And alhamdulillah, some of you who might be on Snapchat or Instagram might have seen the post he posted. And uh, just a quick clarification, I see he's a little bit nervous maybe. Uh, am, I, am I right? Yeah? Slightly nervous? I've got over it. Oh, you've got over it. Okay, that's good. But I can just say something quickly. We're all human beings. We're all trying to help one another. I'm sure you guys make dua for me as well. Uh, what I'd like you to let you know is yesterday we were trying to take a picture. So as I was, uh, you know, pressing the screen, I noticed this white light from it. You guys probably know those who have iPhones. I said it earlier, but I'm repeating it because the man is here. Okay. So what happened is uh, he said, that's a video. So I said, oh, salam alaikum and whatever, whatever I said. And that went viral, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, that's okay. We're speaking about zina. For those who don't know what it means, it's talking of adultery or fornication, sexual misconduct, misbehavior. Now, to begin with, Allah has made marriage very easy. And Allah has facilitated it. It's so simple. If you think, nah, it's difficult. It's because of something that's holding you down. That's not Allah. That's what it is. It's not Islam. It's not Allah. It's not the rule of Allah. It's something else that's holding you back, holding you down, prohibiting, stopping, putting obstacles. It can never be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has made it easy so that no one has an excuse to say I committed adultery, it's one of the kabair, it's one of the major sins. It removes the nur from the face of an individual and it removes the happiness and contentment from the life of an individual and it takes away the chances of you or me or anyone else going into paradise with ease. So it's not like uh, you won't enter paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all paradise. But you need to seek forgiveness, you need to make amends, you need to become once again a person who's asked Allah's forgiveness and said look I've done whatever I've done in the past it's over it's gone I don't want shaitan to bog me down I started a new life and oh Allah forgive me grant me paradise once you're genuine and sincere do not let shaitan make you go back to think about what happened and destroy your future because one of shaitan's plans is he makes you lose hope Losing hope in the sense that, oh, the, someone comes and says, you know, I've committed adultery or fornication or I've cheated and I've done this and that and I made tawbah, but you know, it's eating me alive. I, I can't read salah anymore. I, I feel too dirty. That's shaitan. The first part of it was the mercy of Allah that made you turn to Allah. But the second part of it is the devil making you think, hang on, hang on, hang on. Allah won't forgive you. No way. You went a little bit too far, you know. No matter what you've done, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Listen to these beautiful verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون أولئك جزاؤهم مغفرة من ربهم وجنات Amazing. Allah is saying those who have transgressed against themselves, committed immorality, those who have engaged in immoral acts, and this includes adultery, fornication, and everything we're speaking about this evening in terms of sin. Those who have engaged in immoral acts or they have oppressed themselves, remember Allah and seek forgiveness. And who is there to forgive besides Allah? You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? If they do not continue in their bad ways, which means if they've turned and they've changed their lives, no, and they know that they have actually turned for the sake of Allah. They don't knowingly go back and commit the sin. Allah says for them is forgiveness and paradise. So Allah is talking about those who did commit the sin. That hang on, there's a way to get to paradise. And that is mend your ways. Forget about the past by seeking forgiveness. Don't just say, okay, I was bad. Now I'm good. Ask Allah's forgiveness. I was bad. Oh Allah, forgive me. Now I'm good. And then don't lose hope. I've come across so many people and I'm sure Ali, we had a chat just before the session and we were exchanging notes and he was telling me that a lot of people ask about halal dating, for example. And I was busy telling him, you know, the dates that I know that are purely halal are from Medina Munawwara. Those are the ones really, they have chocolate coated, they now have strawberry, they have so much. Those are halal dates, my brothers and sisters, really halal dates. Do you know them? You know them? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. But anyway, we'll get to that halal dating. What I'm saying right now is of utmost importance, and that is, brothers and sisters, what you've done cannot be undone except through Tawbah. That's it. When you engage in Tawbah, it is undone. When we say undone, listen to another verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about zina. And major sins in Surah Al Furqan towards the end. And Allah speaks about major sins. And then He says, Those people who engage in major sins will be punished. But He makes an exception because He's so merciful. And He says, the exception is of those who have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after that done good deeds. Allah says for them we will convert the bad deeds undone isn't it we were speaking about undoing bad deeds we will convert the bad deeds by bringing them onto the right side of the scale into good deeds because they changed their lives after they asked Allah's forgiveness so if you ask Allah's forgiveness from a sin he will forgive you and he will wipe the sin out and if you commit the sin again you ask Allah's forgiveness again he will forgive you he will wipe the sin and if you commit the sin a third time you ask Allah's forgiveness and the conditions are admit your sin regret it ask Allah's forgiveness and promise not to do it again if those conditions are met it's wiped out gone don't doubt the forgiveness of Allah don't ever don't allow shaitan to come to you and make you think you know what I'm not forgiven if those four conditions were met you are forgiven so some might ask what if after some time I committed it again because you know I happened to fall although when I engaged in Tawbah I was genuine well, if you were genuine, be genuine once again and genuine a third time and genuine up to the time you die. If it, the sin was repeated without having planned it at the time of your previous tawbah, you know what? You will still be deserving of the mercy of Allah. That tawbah is acceptable. But one 
is for your tawbah to be accepted in a way that the sin is wiped out. The other is for your tawbah to be accepted and your sin is converted to a good deed. When will that be? When you have changed your life. That's the condition. And done only good deeds thereafter. Avoided major sin thereafter. Then you are owed something else. Because you know once you sin, you sin once, you regret. That feeling of regret is a sign of iman, sign of belief. When you commit the same sin again, your regret is a little bit less. Third time, it's less. Four, five, six, seven times, it becomes a habit. You start enjoying committing a sin. And this is why if you can ask Allah's forgiveness and quit knowing that you can do it, but you're not doing it for the sake of Allah. Allah says, you know what? You deserve that that bad deed becomes a good deed. You know why? Because you could have done it, but you didn't because you want to please Allah. So this is just the introduction. I started with it. I took a bit of time with it. But my brother, I think it's extremely important because a lot of us out there, we're struggling with the environment. Do you know what the environment's all about? It's a hyper, hyper, hyper sexualized environment. Everything you look at is advertising the opposite sex. That's what it is. So it's become so difficult. You know, even if you click on a few hashtags, for example, on Instagram, you're bound to see something that you're not supposed to be looking at so you quickly don't look at it you know it doesn't mean the first look is yours so you know one of the sheikhs in nigeria when we were there he was giving an example he says you see you have the phone and you know if you see uh, something that you're not supposed to be looking at some of the people say brother look at this now you know what astaghfirullah astaghfirullah look at that ow ow you know, look 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 at this brother astaghfirullah look my brother check look at this guys look astaghfirullah look look no 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 what one what it means is you just say astaghfirullah and you go to the next page or you delete it or you stop it or whatever and you put the phone down you don't keep on looking at it thinking but it's just my first look as they say that's your phone take it easy you don't need to show the world people forward it they will forward a pornographic or a dirty picture and write at the bottom of it a password. What's the password? Astaghfirullah. How can you do that? You just did something very bad. You promoted evil and you said Astaghfirullah and you think that that's acceptable. No, it's not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So maybe we can get to one of the questions you have there, Habibi. Um, one of the questions, well, this is the third question, but I'm going to put it right at the top uh, because if there's aunties and uncles here and this is one of the questions that I, you know, every time I get an opportunity where I know there's aunties and uncles listening, this is the question that I want to ask. Um, and the reason why I want to ask is because we have many questions as well. But one of these questions is regarding, um, like w w a couple of weeks ago, a brother messaged me and he said, okay, okay, mashallah, you talk about how to protect yourself from zina, etc. But I want to do it the halal way. The halal way is not possible for me because my father or my mother is rejecting a sister or a brother because he's black or he's white. This even happens with, for example, no offense to Pakistanis and Bangladeshis here, I love you all, may Allah bless you guys, with the same tribe. You know, it's like Somalians as well, no disrespect. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's like, you're in the same tribe, you're Somalian. I'm like, why are they rejecting another Somalian? Not from my tribe. So this is the main question and one of the biggest reasons which I believe from what I've seen out there, the, the reason why the youth take the road to dinner. So how could one protect, uh, protect themselves and what kind of advice would you give to the parents who are making it hard for the children to do it in a halal way, the marriage? You know, it's a question that I've been a victim of myself. Me too. Confessions of some time back, mashallah. May Allah forgive them and forgive us. I look at it in hindsight and I say, Allahu Akbar, perhaps we were meant to be you know, advising the parents, my beloved parents who are here and who will listen to this later on. If you have not followed the method that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to the marriage of your children, you've lost the plot. You think it's your child. It's not. It's Allah's child. It's just a test for you. The child you think, my child, my child, no way. You're just fortunate that Allah's allowed you to say that for a moment. He can take the child away from you now. And if he wanted, he wouldn't have even blessed you with the child. So don't think my child, tell yourself, Amana from Allah will take away anytime, will question me about how I brought this Amana up. 
and what I did. So the, so the hadith, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ If someone comes to you wanting to marry, and they have proposed to marry your child, and there two things are decent, if you don't allow that marriage, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you, there will be great fitna on earth and fasad. You know what fitna and fasad means? There will be trials, problems, chaos, calamity, issues, because now you've encouraged sin. So what are these two things? The deen. The deen meaning the level of religiousness, the level of closeness to Allah. So something decent. They don't have to be someone so pious, you know, so pious that, you know, they've got to be in Salatul Tahajjud every day before I accept them. Dear dad, you don't even read Tahajjud yourself. So stop it. You know, they must be totally honest. Dad, you lie as well. I've caught you lying so many times. You know, sometimes, astaghfirullah, I shouldn't say this, but I feel like putting a CCTV in my own home just to prove to people who live with me sometimes, you did say this, didn't you? You know, the laughter means a lot of us would love to do that. Well, subhanallah, do it. Do it. And say, Dad, here it is. <laughs> they, they will be so good and quiet. And tell them, those sheikhs you are a friend of, I'm going to show them how you operate in the home. They will be so upset. What about Allah? Allah's watching all the time. You're not worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone comes to you, the deen is okay and the character is okay they speak to you with respect they're ready to respect your child they have a sense of responsibility let the marriage happen let it happen so someone might say oh but the hadith speaks about kufu you know what kufu is it means they need to be on a similar cultural line that's a misinterpretation of the word you have not interpreted the hadith correctly you're talking of similarities in terms of the upbringing so if you're brought up in london You've been to the similar schools, you've gone up, you've had similar upbringing, you know what's happening, that's kufu. The color is never an issue. The tribe is not an issue. Bilal ibn Rabah was known as radiyallahu an. What was he? He was from Africa, subhanallah. Suhaib al-Rumi, he was from Rome, subhanallah. He was a white man. They were companions for a reason. If Allah wanted, they wouldn't have been companions, but they were companions for us to learn a lesson later on to say, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do not be a racist. Do not be a tribalist. You come from this tribe. Do you know a lot of us? And I'm going to say this to the older people. A lot of us. Even though we think that we're not racist, we are. Even though we think we're not tribalist, wallahi, search your heart. You think ah, the guys from my village are slightly better than the guys from that village. What village are you talking about? You know, the guys from up north are a little bit backward from the guys in London. I don't know if you've heard that. You know, we've got a problem with people who come from another area. Wallahi, in India, there is a river. If you're from the other side, you're a baddie. And if you're from this side, those people consider you a baddie. The same applies in the Philippines. If you come from the south, you're khalas. You're somewhat on another level altogether. Why? When the hadith speaks clearly, the verse of the Quran speaks about Adam and Hawa being created. Your forefathers, subhanallah. You are all from the family of the Prophet. Do you know that? Everyone, including myself, we are honored to be from the family of the Prophet. Which Prophet is the question? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Because Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is the closest common grandfather whom we know for a fact was our father. So aren't you from the family of the Prophet Nuh? May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. There you are. So if an African comes to you to marry your daughter and you happen to be, for example, Caucasian or Asian, and he tells you, listen, I would like to get married to your daughter, for example. Look at his deen and his khuluq and see the interest of your child. Because in Islam, it is prohibited to force your child to marry whom they do not want to marry. It's a major sin. Major sin meaning you are, you are going to encourage so many other sins as a result. So remember this, if someone comes to you and your child, your son, your daughter has a keen interest and they are so keen for it and you happen to look at the deen and the khuluq, you have to, by the instruction of Allah's messenger, let it happen. If you don't, you're a racist, you're a tribalist, you're a whatever elseist and you know what? You're going to be caught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
a lot of people are struggling struggling because they went to school with someone they went to uni with someone and so on and so forth and later on they came the proper way please come and see my dad and the poor fellow comes to see the dad and the dad says no why your skin tan is 3.3 degrees more than mine I don't know if tans are measured in degrees Habibi but I just had to say it okay degrees because of the heat you know where you come from Africa like me subhanallah normally in Africa you find the hand is very dark the reason is when you drive you know you, you your hands are always burnt so they look at your hand and say this guy is extremely dark in complexion so one guy says let me open my button see see okay may Allah forgive us wallahi it's a problem it's got nothing to do with the skin color the tan I come from Africa even among the Africans sometimes they'll tell you hey this person's a little bit too dark hey we're all Africans at the end of the day come on subhanallah we're all human beings someone's got deen and khuluq please let it happen because you're going against Allah and his Rasul no but what are people going to say what are people going to say what is Allah going to say the day what are you going to say the day you dragged into hellfire I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom but for this thing there is a bit of doom coming in your direction you know what doom is it's a spray you come across it mashallah 30 minutes jazakallah khair you see the brother says three minutes do you agree that the quran says al hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha any good deed is multiplied by 10 you agree isn't this a good deed so wouldn't you like us to multiply the three by 10 so we have 30 minutes habibi jazakallah khair alhamdulillah shukran mashallah uh, you thank you may Allah bless you answered the I was gonna ask you forced marriages but alhamdulillah you covered that uh, brothers I will not leave the stage until I've gone through these questions inshallah yeah um, then one of the next questions is how how do I protect myself from zina I think the questions are related so how do you protect yourself from zina the reality is number one number one everyone listen to this it's not what you think I'm gonna say okay self-restraint restrain yourself you can restrain yourself I mean I had a 14 year old come to me not so long ago how do I protect myself from Zina I want to get married come on be a little bit realistic you got to protect yourself you restrain yourself sabr sabr come on your day will come when we were young we also used to look at the opposite sex sometimes and think when will I ever get married today mashallah you know we've got children of our own mashallah I'm sitting on about eight children by the will of Allah so subhanallah to be honest with you you have to protect yourself that's what supper is all about you reward the reward you're going to get is for abstaining from prohibition that's the reward so not only your salah and your zakah that's doing good deeds but abstaining from bad is also a reward so here's your opportunity stay back however the hadith speaks about fasting so you will fast fast every Monday and Thursday fast thrice th thr you know three times a month the Ayyamul Bid, the 13th 14th 15th of the lunar calendar and so on this will help you concentrate have good company good company really goes a long way in protecting you from adultery don't find yourself thank you shukran 10 minutes how did that drop straight from 30 to 10 Habibi Sheikh I suggest you don't lift it let someone else do it Sheikh. mashallah you will have to face everybody here because it's a distraction Sheikh. we know the time is up don't worry we're now on overtime you know when a match is being played football and it's zero zero you know what happens they allow you how many minutes more Sheikh? Uh, i think we have 20 minutes 20 minutes no i think it's more than it's about 45 minutes it's Shall a whole Shall even better Shall yeah 22 and a half minutes each we have that this is more important than football do you agree guys there we are we have we are democratic they have voted mashallah okay so what we need to do subhanallah is protect ourselves have good company read a lot of the Quran go into lessons try and expand your religious learning watch out how you use your phone how you use your phone I want to tell you something sad many of us feel we're in love with someone because of the phone but the person in real life I've come across so many who've got married as a result a few have been happy but a lot say it's not who I thought it was you know why today like you have Photoshop you also have akhlaq shop which means somehow their akhlaq is shocked you think that they're really amazing and when you live with them they ignore you they're on the phone with someone else and you start thinking so don't be deceived by the phone 
You know, when someone says, I love you, wallahi, so many of them are just saying it because it's just like saying, hello, hi, how are you? And you know what I love you means sometimes nowadays? I want to use you. That's what it means. I promise you, I promise you it means that. Have you seen what I've said once some time back on Twitter? I said, if people can say lol without laughing, they can say I love you without loving. And I think a lot of people caught on that. But I want to add something else today and tell you a lot of the people say I love you and actually mean without you knowing, I just want to use you. And because women are generally, you know, emotionally, they get more attached. It's sometimes the youth, the young men who are abusing this attachment. So be careful, abstain, be strict on yourself. You fast, you have good company and you try and engage in more acts of worship. Go out and become a volunteer. Help here, help there. And subhanallah, when the time is right, then you start opening your eyes. And I have one statement for a lot of the brothers and sisters who are not married. Uh, subhanallah. And that is, before you are married, don't close your eyes onto one person. As tough as that sounds. As tough as it sounds. Once you're engaged, then you close your eyes. Done. Because maybe Allah doesn't want you to marry the person because they are bad, horrible. Or maybe Allah doesn't want it because something might go wrong with the children that couple will have and you don't know. So maybe Allah is keeping you apart. I'm not saying don't try. You try. You speak to your parents. You convince them. You can even change your wilaya if you want. You know what that means? This is my wali. He's my father. I will go to the panel of scholars and tell them my father is blocking my marriage without any reason. So I want to marry without my dad. And if you if you qualify for that, you can actually shift that wilaya to a wali will be someone else. Who will it be? That panel of scholars in an Islamic country, you'd have the Qadi or someone who would represent you as a wali. So they be, the person becomes a wali of yours. So you need to be careful because sometimes if you do that and you know that the person you want to marry is not standing on their own two feet in terms of, you know, finances and so on, you might have to come back to your family one day and they might not want you at that stage. I think most families do take you back. But why should we do that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So if you want to protect yourself from zina, there are steps. The hadith speaks of fasting and lowering your gaze. Today, people watch movies and watch this. And you know what? We see all these uh, tutorials. Hijab tutorials are being watched by the males. I don't know what for. Hijab tutorials. And they forward you and say, did you see this hijab? You know, is this the camel hump? Brother, there's a hump in your head, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. What are you worried about this thing here for? Take it easy. Let the sisters go ahead and have a peep. But then you look at your wife and you say, you know, I saw the tutorial. I think you need to look a bit like so and so, you know, so and so. May Allah forgive us. So this is why we don't lower our gaze and we don't realize lowering the gaze is very important. Even when it comes to the screen. I know, you know, you always get wise cracks in the youth. Sometimes they say, but Sheikh, I'm lowering my gaze, looking in the screen, you know, I'm lo lowering my gaze. That's not what it is. You know what I mean. You don't look at these things by the will of Allah. And if you do, you know, you are allowed to say, mashallah. You know, if you really have great intentions, you can even say, inshallah. But it's okay. That's where it stops. <laughs> Allah. Yeah, we, are, we got two more questions, inshallah. I need to get these out of the way, brothers. So please bear with us. It won't be long, inshallah. Um, but before I go on the question, I just want to mention a story regarding um, how the families reject uh, proposals because of their color. There was a story where uh, a, a, a brother, a, 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 a righteous brother from Africa, who came to ask for a sister's hand, and the family rejected based on his color. And unfortunately, this sister ended up in the future time committing zina with a non-Muslim and becoming pregnant. And unfortunately, when this story is told, you know, a parents get shocked. And I'm sure this pa the parents of this sister was shocked as well. But again, you need to ask yourself a question. When your child wanted to do it in a halal way, halal manner, brought a ha brother home in a respectful way, and you reject him based on color, and your daughter now, and this is a true story, went and became pregnant by a non-Muslim. And then what does the parents call? They bang their head against the wall. Oh Allah, where did I go wrong? Wallahi, you went wrong by being racist. And the reason why I'm telling this story is because we deal with the youth. We get these messages. This is one of the biggest problems. That's why I really want to, you know, speak to aunties and uncles, please, for the sake of Allah, make it easy on the youth. The worst thing is when they use Islam to justify themselves. How? 
you know, you've been brought up in a similar environment. That's good enough, subhanAllah. I can tell you another true story. I'm going to have to word it very carefully because of the, what exactly happened. There was a sister who wanted to marry a man from Africa. And she was an Asian. So basically, the parents said no. And there was a big issue. And you know, so many things were discussed. And she was quiet. And a while later, the parents came to me and told me, please, can you convince this daughter to marry the same guy? And I'm like, but what's wrong? Can't you just speak to her? No. You don't know what's happened. Now, one year had passed approximately. And this sister came up to her parents and told them that I want to marry someone. And you know who that someone was? Another sister. So subhanallah, what happened is the parents now are so worried. And they said, bring the man, no matter who he is and where he's from, bring him on. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I'm not commenting further, but I'm sure you've understood. Okay, quickly. Um, one of the questions that uh, need to be answered is, how can I get to know somebody in a halal manner? Because unfortunately, a lot of the youth think that Islam is, you don't see the person you want to marry. It's just you, may, you meet on the wedding day and halas, you get married. And obviously we know that's not the case. How could one go about getting to know the opposite gender in a halal manner you know before I answer that let me quickly tell you that my brothers and sisters I'm not encouraging you to just bypass your parents your parents are the most important figures in your homes in your house there is so much of rights they have you must discuss these matters have an open relationship with them but what I am trying to do is those of us who do find ourselves in this type of position predicament I'm asking the parents to be more understanding and to let things happen you know I have children, I have ideals for them, but trust me, and I have proven myself. If one of them would come to me and tell me, I'm interested in marrying so-and-so, I'm interested in two things, deen and akhlaq. You have it, and you're interested, and both parties are interested. I am only a facilitator of what Allah has instructed me to facilitate. That's all. What happens, happens later. Please, let's open our eyes and continue. So, regarding the, the question of how do I meet in a halal way, halal dating? And I think we will end with this one, right? Or one more? Okay, no problem, no problem. We have the vote, it's okay. We, we're, still, we're still there. You're still the mayor. So basically, halal way of, it's not dating. It's actually meeting. You see in Islam, it's actually a sunnah to see your spouse. You know, you speak to the person, you meet them. But it must be under supervision so that you're not abused, I tell you. The main thing is the issue of a chaperone. So if you have a girl, for example, she's seen a brother, it can happen and she's interested. Wallahi, the best way of doing it is you get hold of your own brother, your father. You know, I have such a relationship with my children, I will do it for my daughter any day. And if she's interested in someone, I'll go meet him and so on and tell him, hey, listen, you know, my daughter's showing an interest, for example, in you and let's just get to know each other. You know, what do you think? And I can gauge and I can, don't involve your chaperone after you were already aborted once. You know what I mean? After everything's over, you're already in such love that there's no way that you're going to take no for an answer. That's a mistake that people make. You involve your family far down the line. You see, so what happens is initially they will look and, and they will then introduce you officially. I'm here, for example, and you can be seated there and have a nice chat, mashallah, coffee, a tea. I might not be able to listen in to exactly what you guys are saying, but mashallah, you're, you're under the eye. There's no kissing, no touching, no nothing, because why? There can't be emotions at that stage. You're talking, you're discussing. What are you, what do you like? What do you not like? You see how the person speaks, how they look, they stand, how tall, short, all these things. It's permissible to look at these things, okay? So if you're satisfied, you can uh, let your parents know. If both of you are satisfied and you're happy, alhamdulillah. If not, nowadays, a lot of the people say, I need to meet you again. It's not enough. So you meet again and you meet again and you meet again. Every time, similar condition. There is no restriction as to the amount of meetings. Some people come to you and say, no, you must meet once and that's it. You know what? You bring the tea in and you just say, Salaamu Alaikum and you walk out. And he's seen the tea. Subhanallah. A wise guy will say, hang on, hang on, hang on. You brought me milk tea. I don't want milk tea. I need another cup of tea. I need green tea. And then she speaks to you. And then, trust me, the tea business was belonging to the 1960s and 70s. Subhanallah. At the moment, it's cappuccino, guys. So, 
you need to know you're allowed to meet, you're allowed to talk, you're allowed to have a coffee together, you're allowed to sit and chat. You must know because the last thing you want is for your daughter to marry a guy who's only marrying your daughter because he, he wants to please his parents, but he's got something on the side and your daughter is banished. Wallahi, it's happening. Every day it's happening. And they tell you two years later, I never wanted to marry you. I've already got my girlfriend. I've already got three children from her and so on. And you're like, why didn't you tell me? Well, I did it for my parents. The punishment of those parents is severe. You destroyed the lives of people. So it's best to be honest to say, listen, we're wasting time. I've already got someone. My parents are just being funny. Thank you so much. I respect you. I salute you. Shukran, I will say no for you. Thank you. So the person will go back and say, listen, no. It shouldn't even get to that. You should have an open relationship. But the problem with us, we're so hypocritical. We allow our kids to go everywhere. But when it comes to marriage, no, you can't meet him. Dad, I've met 3,000 men in my life. The man I want to marry, you don't want me to meet him. What's the, what's the problem? Where are you? What's happening? I've had lecturers who were male. I've had everyone who was... And the man I want to marry, you're not even allowing to, me to meet him under supervision. And the next thing, the dad says, okay, under supervision. So he comes and he sits right here. Right, what do you want to say? Say it. Take it easy. Take it... They know they're on a new, the new generation. There is a generation gap. We are not compromising the deen. We are only showing you how it works up to Qiyamah. Don't come and implement your own culture here when it contradicts the deen. If it doesn't contradict the deen, by all means, you're more than welcome. If it does, you're not welcome. May Allah forgive us. So you meet once, you meet twice, you meet three times. And then if you're not happy, respectfully, shukran, thank you so much and so on. Another thing. When you have a chat, can I have your number? Yeah, you can. You know what's the proper way? I would like to suggest. I've seen, I've seen young girls and, and boys as well sometimes being bitten by statements of, uh, you know, emotional value. I love you, I miss you. Send me a picture, please. Send me one without your hijab. Send me one this way, that way. And I know of Muslim children who send each other nudes and they come out. They release. They're blackmailed. Watch out. Watch out. No matter how deep you think the relationship is, don't do something un-Islamic so that you won't be hurt. However, let's listen to this. So if you want to chat on WhatsApp, no problem. You can chat with me. But guess what? My brother's going to be the, per the third person in the group. He will be dormant and quiet. The guy says, but don't be, don't be so fool. Just be realistic. Come on. How? Do you know what? If you're really interested in marrying me, you will agree. What do you have to hide? You're going to be living. These are your in-laws, man. Come. Come on to the chat. It's the three of us. Let's talk. And see, he won't be able to say, oh, wow, I haven't yet seen your legs, man. You know, because why? Brother is there. It's only done for your protection. Your heart is one of the most valuable organs. You know, the heart and the mind are the most powerful organs of the body. Do not allow anyone to control those two because they can hurt you very badly. It's Allah. Allah will control. Allah decides. You gave your heart away. Do you know they have the capacity to break your life? And sometimes we do it too soon. Subhanallah. May Allah help us. I've just mentioned a little bit of what I feel. There is a lot more, but inshallah, me and Ali Da'wah, we're going to get together sometime and make a few videos, inshallah. May Allah grant you Jannah. Um, last question. Say Ameen, ya Ameen, Ameen. I was expecting you to say Ameen. If you don't want to make videos with me, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> um, how can I... Okay. That, uh, how can I make my haram relationship halal? It's haram, but I want to change my ways. Okay, number one. If it's haram, you want to change your ways, ask yourself, are you ready for marriage? If not, cut it, drop it, don't use and abuse. A lot of people say, I want to marry you, but you know what, three years, three years. That's another problem we face. Parents have agreed, but they say the marriage will only happen in three years. These children are literally spending their life like husband and wife already. And you're just saying nikah will happen. I'm worried about people. Worried about people? Subhanallah. It's the second time I said it. How can you worry about people when you don't even know how long you're going to live? You set the trend, people will follow. Wallahi, there was an example of a very rich person in one of the countries and he's a friend of mine. And I told him, he said, I want to throw a party for my daughter. She's the only daughter getting married and I want to invite so many. I said, listen, brother, if you keep it simple and set a trend, a lot of people will follow. Wallahi, he kept it simple and straightforward and he did everything as per the islamic you know rulings and i swear so many people followed and i said there you are brother you get the reward of everyone they looked at the joneses and followed saw that the joneses themselves were so down to earth who are we 
The problem is every wedding has become a competition. You know, those who are not even the bride, they fuss about the clothing they're going to wear at someone else's wedding whom they don't even get along with sometime just because they, and they have a new set of clothing sewn and shoes and handbags, accessories and whatnot and hijabs for someone else's wedding. Whereas for your own wedding, you're supposed to be even simpler than that. May Allah forgive us. And this is why we say, keep it simple. It's not supposed to be a competition. And I was told by one of the brothers, well, you know what? We like all the sisters to dress up nicely because we go to weddings in order to find one for ourselves. Well, that's not the platform. You know, I remember uh, in one of the cultures, you know, culturally, there are some people who think, well, you go to the wedding to scout. You go and scout. Well, if the boys are scouting the girls, that's not a religious function, right? However, if your sister comes across someone, your brother comes across a, a decent brother and so on, and they bring the issue up, remember you have sisters to get married. If I see a sister who's old and she's not married, I blame the males who are nearest to her, starting from her father. You were supposed to have kept an eye out. You were supposed to have spoken. Don't be shy. Speak. Say, look, brother. You know, it's happened to me as well, where I've had young people come to me and say, you know, so and so, so and so, so and so, I have this, this, this. What do you think of marriage? And subhanAllah, I will answer in my own way with respect. But I really admire your courage. I really admire your courage. Wallahi. And I believe that that's the right thing because who knows, you will ask five or ten people and one of them who's the right one chosen by Allah will probably say, hey, mashallah, let's take it a step further. And you might end up getting married, but you've done nothing. People say, oh, you want to get married? Make dua. Make dua? Is it like a pot that you keep on making something? No way. Make dua. Yes, we will do the dua, but with that we have to act. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us, these haram relations, to make them halal. You need to make sure that you get the nikah done. Simple as that. Even if you cannot afford to live with each other now, I encourage your parents, I encourage all parents out there to look into the following scenario. And that is, if your children cannot afford to live with each other in the same home for now, let the nikah happen and let them live separately. No one said that they have to live together right now. But if the nikah has taken place, and then what will happen? At least the relationship is halal. So you are invoking the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah descends on you. This is how you will achieve. If there's no mercy, what are you going to achieve? Subhanallah. So you cannot continue to just say, this guy can't afford a home. And therefore, when he has a job worth 130,000 pounds a year, when he's got a, a car and a house, then we will allow the nikah. Trust me, they've already, they're already living, like I said, husband and wife, committing every sin there is in the book. And you know what? You're just waiting for 10 years to pass. By that time, they could have had children who were already in the school. Subhanallah. Can I tell you what? A lot of the old people are very guilty of wanting the, their sons-in-law to be wealthy people when they married their own wives, who are the mothers of these same daughters, they didn't even have a pair of shoes. Do you know that? So don't make it a criteria. You need a home, you need a house. He just needs to be responsible. If he's responsible, he will take care of your daughter like he's taking care of everyone else. Subhanallah. He doesn't need to be a millionaire. Wallahi, if that was the case, the hadith would have said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ عِنْدَهُ مَال فَزَوِّجُوهُ If someone came to you, they have a lot of wealth, get them married. Never has that been a criteria. Subhanallah. Remember this, responsible individual. Yes, they may have to downgrade their lives. Some might be fortunate to upgrade a little bit. That can be taken away immediately. I know of so many people who were wealthy when they got married and they lost absolutely everything a little bit later down the line. And I know the opposite. People who were poor, they got married. Allah says in the Quran that if you marry and you are not able, meaning you're not so wealthy, if you do that in order to protect your chastity, Allah will grant you sustenance. He will make you wealthy. Listen in Surah An-Nur, Allah says, Speaking about marriage, if the two are poor, their intention was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant them that financial independence. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So please, my brothers and sisters, if you're not interested in the nikah, don't use and abuse someone's child. Never. 
Don't play a game to say, we'll get married in five years. And in the, within that time, the girl is waiting for you or the boy is waiting, for example, and two years later, you just say, not interested. You've broken their, not only their heart, you've destroyed a life. That's what you've done. The person could have actually gone and married someone else. However, the last thing I'm going to say here is that if you have committed sin in the past, you've done haram and so on, please, if, the, if Allah has made it such that the two of you are now getting married, seek Allah's forgiveness for whatever you've done in the past. Start a new leaf. People have committed adultery, whatever they've done, they're now getting married. They're now getting married. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Have your function in a proper way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what's the point of having a haram function when Allah's facilitated halal relationship? What's the point? Just have a simple function, beautiful, for the sake of Allah. Trust me, what you need most is contentment. You know, all the haram that happened in the function is not going to come to your aid. It will actually result in your detriment. To be honest, those who have had functions where haram has taken place, seek Allah's forgiveness. You will turn a new leaf and proceed. Because that function is a seed that you're sowing for the tree that's about to grow in your life. If it's a bad seed, do you expect a good fruit to come out of it? Well, if you engage in tawbah, still Allah's mercy will grant you good fruit. So please, let's mend our ways. Let's come out. Allah's made it so easy. Don't use the cheap excuses. I have spoken to so many parents I don't even know because of emails that have come in my direction. And I've offered or volunteered to be a middleman to say, I'll speak to your parents. Some of them have sworn me. Some of them have told me, would you give your own child? And I said, yes, I would. Are you sure? They were quiet. Are you sure? I said, yes, I would. And mashallah, a lot of them have actually given their daughters and their sons. Subhanallah, they've blessed the marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for having dwindled off the path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us back upon revelation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplify all the difficulties that people are facing in terms of marriage. I support you. I really do. Remember the two qualities, deen and khuluq. If that's the case, you have the support not only of myself, but even of Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. I uh, just want to finish off. Uh, this was a dream to me to have this uh, topic with you, inshallah. And also, brothers and sisters, this video, not video, obviously, it's been recorded. It's going to be on YouTube. If you've missed out anything, and we, we discussed regarding a lot of topics regarding zina, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got a whole reality show based on this topic. So, inshallah, if you guys... Uh, inshallah you guys will benefit and before i uh, finish i want to praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful the most just all praises glory and gratitude belong to him for the, all the works that we do and keep us in your dua and may allah grant you jannah for sharing this platform we have one more problem how do we get Amen. the parents who we address today to watch the youtube clip habibi See, can we is, pay them can we pay them some money or something if i was a millionaire wallahi i would pay them you know why because that's the problem with the youtube videos that's not my mark like they don't watch it so every time i'm on a platform like this where there's an audience or i'm on tv where i know aunties and uncles are watching the first topic that i discuss is this the, f the opportunity that i have if i had the money i would pay them well, I... you know aunties and uncles don't help we want the parents Subhanallah. Yes. let's talk to them may allah I, I hope you know what that their parents in our midst and even later on please listen to what we've said it's a passionate plea we're looking for solutions of the problems of the ummah we really want solutions may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us vehicles of solution to the degree that on the day of judgment when we arrive perhaps allah might just look at that deed and take you straight to jannah you know what you broke every norm that was wrong in order for you to please me here is your paradise may allah grant that to us wa sallallahu wa sallam wa